In the last half of the 20th century, a retired grandmother of modest means devoted her life to the well-being of senior citizens on Cape Ann. A pioneer for proper elder care, her passion and activism helped launch dozens of programs and services that endure today. I'm Corey Kukuru for 1623 Studios, and this is the story of Rose Baker. Rose Marie Finnan was born on August 30th, 1898 in Roxbury, Massachusetts to Irish immigrant James Finnan and his wife Sadie Pike. There are a few details about Rose's early life, much of which remains a mystery to her own children and grandchildren, but this we do know, her childhood was not easy. Rose's family believes she was most likely raised in the convent at St. Mary Star of the Sea, a now defunct Catholic church in East Boston built during the Civil War and had no more than an elementary level education. Rose never spoke of her parents, nor mentioned having any siblings. She worked as a seamstress in East Boston's Central Square, off modern day Route 1A, just outside Jeffrey Field, now known as Logan Airport. She met Gorham Baker, a laborer from Gloucester who moved to her Eastie neighborhood for work. They married the day before Thanksgiving on November 26, 1919. It was a rough and tumble time in Boston, which was reeling from the end of World War I, the global flu pandemic, the Great Molasses Flood, the enactment of Prohibition, and massive labor strikes from the police department and telephone operators. Rose and Gorham scraped by. In 1924, the young couple moved to Gloucester's Maplewood Avenue, where Gorham took a custodial job at the burgeoning YMCA, and Rose found work as a seamstress. A year later, they welcomed their first of three daughters, Marie. Josephine and Rita arrived shortly thereafter. Life in Gloucester was good for the Bakers until the onset of World War II, when heartache befell the family. In 1942, Gorham died suddenly at the age of 51, forcing youngest daughter Rita to drop out of Gloucester High School to help support the family. Middle child Josephine opened a beauty salon on Middle Street. Rose, having a notion she'd be involved somehow sooner than later, immediately took hairdressing classes. Within a year, Josephine got married and Rose took over. With a keen sense for business, Rose successfully managed Josephine's beauty shop for over two decades. During her years behind the chair, Rose established a very loyal clientele. Not only did she hear all the city gossip, she learned about the challenges many of her senior customers were facing. Whenever she had spare time, Rose visited them to hear their concerns. This began a new chapter in her life, passionate advocacy for older adults. I began to see so many things the elderly could get but didn't know about, Rose would say later in life, and I've been fighting for them ever since. Rose was deeply religious and attended mass at St. Anne's every Sunday, but she was also a bulldog for her beliefs, often flashing her Irish temper and using a spicy vocabulary that fit in perfectly on the Gloucester docks. There was no gray area with Rose. You were either on her side or not. Folks dubbed her the Iron Lady for her refusal to take no for an answer. As she implored the city and state to do more for seniors, politicians shrunk in her presence, and Rose was barely five feet tall. In 1959, at age 61, she became the first chair of the Gloucester Council on Aging, and eventually moved into senior housing on Poplar Street. It's there that she created the Poplar Park Friendship Club, the region's first drop-in senior center, and the development's community building. She was also instrumental in kickstarting regular bus service for seniors at both the Poplar Park and Lincoln Park developments. Then in 1965, just before retiring from Josephine's Beauty Shop, Rose became an original volunteer for the newly formed Action Inc. The local chapter was one of a thousand community-centered nonprofit agencies launched nationwide as part of President Lyndon Johnson's War on Poverty. In short order, Rose managed a group of volunteers and went door-to-door -door visiting seniors to enroll them into Action's multitude of services. Rose was a big believer in group recreation. For years, she raised funds and organized city-sponsored bus trips everywhere from national parks to Niagara Falls. In 1972, she oversaw a hot lunch program hosted at Fuller School and continued to visit and phone housebound seniors year after year after year. Throughout her 70s, 80s, and 90s, Rose worked tirelessly to serve those in need. The list of advisory boards Rose either created or participated in is astonishing. The State Executive Office of Elder Affairs, the Gloucester Housing Authority Tenants Council, the Commonwealth Volunteer Service Corps, Senior Home Care Services, the Gloucester Golden Agers, the Elder Service Corps, the Salvation Army, the Gloucester Community Development Advisory Board, 
the Board of Discrimination on Housing, and that's just a sample. Citing the need for permanence in elder care, Rose wrote a grant to fund a full-time executive director position for the Council on Aging. It was 1987. She was 89 years young. Rose's ultimate dream was to realize a designated, standalone home for programs and resources geared towards the welfare of older adults, a true senior center. There had been makeshift centers that occupied small spaces on Main Street and the YMCA, but more would be needed to assist the community's growing number of elder citizens, much more. Rose doubled down. During an honorary dinner in her 91st year held at the Surf Restaurant in Magnolia, Rose, who loathed being the center of attention, insisted to the dignitaries on hand that all proceeds of the event go towards the establishment of a permanent senior center. A year later, the city purchased a site on Manuel Lewis Street in the heart of downtown Gloucester. Though this was a step in the right direction, raising capital to start construction would take time, lots of time. Between the city and private donors, full financing for the new center wasn't expected for up to a decade. On January 21, 1993, a frail rose cut a symbolic ribbon at the senior center's temporary home at the YMCA. Soon after, she fell ill and moved to Seacoast Nursing Home. Incredibly, but not surprisingly, Rose continued to chair the Council on Aging for the 34th straight year. The Council moved its meetings to Seacoast in order to accommodate her. Rose Marie Baker passed away on January 23, 1995, at the age of 96. Though she didn't live to see the building that bears her name, her actions and advocacy were paramount to its creation. The Rose Baker Senior Center opened its doors in 2001, and it immediately became a vital and vibrant part of the community. Led by dedicated staff and volunteers, the Senior Center today offers important services to anyone over the age of 55. There are programs in art, education, health and wellness, nutrition and exercise, and computer skills, as well as support for housing, health insurance, medical appointments, legal and tax assistance, and transportation needs. And the bus trips Rose organized way back when? They still happen. So does the meals program she established over 50 years ago, except now it takes place at the Senior Center's cafeteria, affectionately known as Rosie's Cafe. Throughout the building, it's impossible to miss the images of Rose, in the stairwell, by the library, outside the rec room, always keeping a watchful eye on her seniors. It's a fitting tribute to the five-foot feisty fighter who made it all possible, Rosemarie Baker, the Iron Lady of Gloucester. Thank you.